Hey guys, thanks for checking out the podcast. Before we get started, I want to remind you about the very cool bucket list trip I am doing in 2026, the Smitty Learns Irish podcast, where I'm going to do my bucket list, hike Ireland for a year, learn about Irish history, town by town, through the mouths of the pub owners and regulars. Because what's a better way to learn about something you love than to experience it yourself? Patreon.com forward slash we the number three Smiths, only three bucks a month, and thanks for checking it out. start you guys one two three one finally seeping is the key word here <laughs> smart enough to figure it out i just ask questions and talk shit i'm not the all news. i saw was a lake mountains and some trees oh. that's the running theme on this fucking podcast whoever deserves mocking and that includes a host man there is a record amount of meth in this place <laughs> Just <laughs> sounds like stuttery Smitty. January 2022, y'all. Fuck milk crates, y'all. Get the fuck out of here. What the hell? Everything. Holy cow. Good. I think we're, uh, I think we're on from uh, what I've done for Smith. <laughs> uh, how's it going? Hey, uh, yeah, I've dubbed this temporary studio Fort Smith. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I basically built a tent fort <laughs> in my parents' garage for the summer because why the fuck not, you know? Uh, hey, what's going on? Uh, happy What the Hell Everything Day. I'm super fucking stoked uh, to get uh, back with these podcasts rolling. I finally got uh, uh, kind of the studio where here in the garage where I needed it. I literally hung up fucking, well, I used old moving blankets for the soundproofing of the old Smith Hole anyway. So I took those and hung them up around uh, uh, from the rafters <laughs> of the garage. Yeah. So I built a tent fort for the summer. Uh, a lot of fun fucking things to get to. Uh, stuff I'm doing. Uh, stuff that I'm obsessing over right now. Uh, which is probably not healthy. But <laughs> what, what are you obsessing about? Particularly uh, just a couple brilliant pieces of filmmaking. Systems though this fucking setup so different i'm like what camera am i on what am i doing the fact that i even thought those words out loud what camera am i on am i on camera one why can't you fucking get your shit straight smitty <laughs> uh man yeah a lot of fucking things going first of all uh, uh let me shout out uh my sponsors m22 in sutton's bay uh kevin i'm gonna be reaching out real soon uh it's been uh Long time since I really reached out to Kevin, at least I feel like, uh, with all the shit going on from the Dude Where's My Lease saga. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, <sighs> yeah, I didn't do any any work, really. I was like, I'm leaving this uh, stuff until I get into the new space. So, uh, Kevin, I'm getting hold of you real soon. Uh, I'm 22 in Sutton's Bay which is a fabulous little uh, uh, inn on M22, just south of Sutton's Bay. Uh, that that drive along M22 is uh, one of the most gorgeous drives in the country. I'll uh, I'll put it in there. Now, this could honestly be one of those blog things where uh, here's, my town made the top five of fucking scenic drives and blah, blah, blah. Why did I make that sound all bitchy? Those are nice blogs, you know. Whenever your town is the top tourist town in the country, and it's not even my town anymore when I say that like that, Traverse City. I am now in Kalkaska, Michigan. Uh, for people listening outside or listening, I'm just used to being on the radio from uh, uh, from back in the aughts. 
in the teens. Uh, in the 20s, actually. Anyway, uh, uh, Kalkaska, or as I like to affectionately call it, Kalkakistan, uh, the beautiful region of northern Michigan, which is about, uh, I would say, 40-ish minutes. Going south versus west. <laughs> which way is which? <laughs> uh, uh, east of Traverse City. And that's where I'm currently uh, residing with the folks. Summer camp with the folks. What a fucking saga this has been. I w- you know, I think most people are caught up on that, but uh, just to refresh, recap, and all that shit. My place that I had rented, a uh, f- uh, full year extended on the lease, uh, or so we had thought. Uh, all of a sudden, the lease disappeared, and your house is for sale, and you have less than two months. Uh, that's a short story. Uh, oh, fuck, what am I going to do? Uh, my... <laughs> My bank account has been bled dry by uh, a slow summer, to say the least. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) With rising prices. So when the house went up for sale and we had to move in less than two months, I'm like, oh, fuck, I got this emergency gig at Turtle Creek Casino uh, bartending at Bourbon 72, and it's it's awesome. I'll get into that. Uh, It's actually turning out really, really well. I was uh, worried for a minute. Anyway, uh got this job at turtle creek uh is just a way to build a bank account so i could fucking find a place uh to live in this crazy ass environment that we live in and to say that the choices are slim even in calcasca right now you got it's it's tough but i'm really starting to put some feelers out there right now uh i wanted to get into this temporary place you know my parents offered it up they had a room uh they put the temporary studio in the garage i'm like it's kind of a no-brainer you know uh and it's nice to get to spend time with the folks. So uh, that's where we're at right now. I'm actually looking at all kinds of places to move. Move the studio, move the business, move the Smith. <laughs> move the Smith. Fucking Kim Wheaton even said that out loud. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I've been to a few towns making contacts with people. Uh, uh, and I've really realized anywhere in this whole, especially... Anywhere, really, but specifically in this region of northern Michigan where I'm just at home. There's any Anywhere in this fucking region I can settle down and know people. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to just travel this fucking region forever and ever and ever now. Uh, and it's cool. So I'm looking everywhere. Uh, the cheaper, the better. <laughs> you know, and then, of course, you know, uh, building this fucking podcast. I, I need a place to... to uh, set down roots with this podcast too. It's like, what town am I going to end up? That's how it feels, you know? Uh, but moving back in with the folks, let me tell you, (laughs) uh, it's, you know, when you're 40 ish, uh, you know, you're creeping up on 50, you know, 47 this year. Uh, moving back in with the folks is kind of a dick punch you know you're like ah oh, fuck i gotta do this again <laughs> you know i got i moved in with the parents when uh, uh i got out of the army in late 99 you know and i stayed in there for, for I, was bet, I bet four or five months also getting a job at turtle creek to build my bank account because that's where i worked after the fuck after i got out of the army is that turtle creek <laughs> the fucking Turtle Creek Casino to the rescue again. Kind of how it is. Uh, uh, so, you know, back then, you know, as an independent person, you, you like to go out and do things on occasion. And uh, where are you going? What are you doing? It's not all the time. Uh, and I'm probably over, overly sensitive to it because I'm already uh, of the mindset in my life where I'm just like, don't tell me what to do. You know what I mean? And then when you're at your parents and the, the, you know, there's always, uh, uh, not always don't say that, but you know what I'm talking about. I love it though. I love, uh, uh, getting to just chat with them, you know, because the way I'm doing this podcast, uh, behind the scenes, is I'm not doing it live when, uh, I'm here just cause I was like, I'm not going to put a fucking, uh, an internet connection in the garage. There's not one here. And I'm just like, you know, 
Plus, I don't want to get too comfortable. <laughs> I'm not going to be here for very long. I've given myself the time limit is fucking Halloween. I'm going to be out of this motherfucker in my Smith hole. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was like, I'm not going to do uh, cable or in here, or internet, rather. So I record it in the garage, and then I just edit it and bring it into the house to either edit it and upload it uh, using the Wi-Fi. And the last video I did, uh, sitting in the living room, headphones on, I can still hear what's going on while I'm editing, you know. Uh, it's just fun to have banter with them, you know. You miss hanging out with them. Uh, you love your parents. Uh, but don't tell me what to do and don't tell me where to go. And, or <laughs> don't, don't tell me where to go. And that's not what I mean. Uh, I had to I kicked my dad out of here to do this podcast because I was like, I, I don't know, man. It's a real thing that I get super distracted and I forget what the fuck I'm talking about. And just the way that I kind of evolved to do this podcast by and large, you know, when I have guests on, it's one thing. But when it's just me going off about whatever I'm going to go off about, if I like looking at a comment section as it's coming in or like specific, especially my dad sitting here, uh, uh, not fucking with me necessarily, but maybe chirping away or has a, an opinion that he's going to, there's going to be engagement. And it's not that I don't want, to, uh, I thought about having, and I probably will have thought about having him come on for a little spot. We are going to do a podcast together. Uh, I talked him into it, at least one episode, and I'll talk about that in a second. But doing this podcast specifically, I'm like, Dad, you need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I told him I was recording. <clears throat> Excuse me. I told him I was recording. And uh, uh, I go, all right, uh, you want to go? <laughs> And he's, he had shut the door because I had talked about it specifically. If the door is shut, that means I'm recording. I don't need to put a sign up, you know. But uh, when you're when I'm recording, if you can't be in here, okay. And then he, and I'm like, so do you think you can go? Oh, you want me to leave? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, just for like, yeah, this one or like the weed day workout runs that I'm gonna do. It's just like some of them I just need to be by myself, you know, just sitting here fucking rambling. <laughs> Kicked out of his own fucking garage. I feel like a fucking dick, you know. But I, here in Fort Smith, uh, this fucking tent fort that I set up in the middle of my dad's garage. Um, I forgot what the point I was fucking making. Uh, the point of the story is, is that. Uh, I kicked him out of his own garage, and I take over, take over his fucking music. I'm like, Dad, I'm turning off your fucking, your country, whatever your preachy cut country music is. <laughs> he's not listening to, like, preachy country music. I feel like, what if he's outside this fucking garage with his ear to, like, the fucking door? I don't think he would do that. Uh, but I turn his music off, so, and I'm like, I need to have my space where I jam, man. And, you know, we both smoke weed. So we have that in common too. So we sit out here and we uh, 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 shoot the shit and it's really fucking cool and fun that uh, I'm just sitting here having some cool stoner conversations with my dad jamming to music. It's honestly, there's been so many fucking instances in the last week or two where we're just sitting out here just chilling. Uh, I'd never smoked weed with my dad before up until recently. I'm new to it, new to the game, so to speak. And, uh, uh, but we're just fucking sitting here yapping. <laughs> we're just yapping. <laughs> and my mom is tired of it already, I'm sure. Uh, she's tired of his yapping. Uh, they're going to get tired of our yapping, you know. But for as many similarities as there is, there are still some differences that are just fucking hilarious. And I want to talk about this podcast. I'm going to do it with my dad. I'm like, well, it's not a podcast. It's a reaction video series. So if you're digging the reaction videos, you, you'll probably dig this. I'm basically going to have him listen to all the newfangled rock and metal that I like. I'm going to call it summer school. So it's going to look something like this if you're watching the video version of this. <laughs> not to... 
Ah, uh, rock and roll summer school at Fort Smith. I was pretty fucking happy about coming up with that. So essentially, uh, I don't know where the fuck you got it, but there's a goddamn little school desk there, an old fucking school desk that's got the lift up a bowl like thing. And I'm like, Dad, you're going to sit at that fucking desk. <laughs> you're going to sit at that fucking desk. And be a student. And I'm going to play you three songs from a band. So, like, uh, I think, I don't know what the first one I'm going to do. We're going to record this right after I record this podcast. But it's going to be really fun. Just, essentially, me and my dad smoking weed and talking music. And I'm going to be playing him the shit that he hates historically throughout my teenage years up until now. Because his attitude usually towards most of the new rock. And, again, I've been on active rock radio in uh, this region for a dozen years, up until, you know, three to four years ago. And I had, uh, 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 he would listen to me on the radio, I don't know how much, because I can't even remember his combination of uh, shitty, slanderous words he had about the bands we used to play on the fucking radio station, but something like Nine Inch Smashed Up Pumpkins or something like that. And he fucking makes fun of all the bands that I've listened to my whole life, pretty much. So I'm going to, Make him listen to these fucking bands and be like, what is your problem with this? You like all sorts of rock and roll, man, from like the 60s and 70s. But at some point it like turned off. And I don't know if it had anything to do with like uh, 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 me listening to it. Uh, if, if he just has a disdain for new rock. I'm trying to figure this out. So I'm going to give him an education. <laughs> and it's going to be really fucking fun. Um, so we're going to record that the first one. But I don't know what band it's going to be what band we're going to feature. It's not going to be like a reaction video similar to what I do, because what I do on mine, pick a band I like, and then I go just down rabbit holes. Oh, shit, we can listen to all these albums together, you guys, and it's really fun. These with my dad are going to be different. This is going to be a series of uh, videos. This is not going to be uh, something that's going to go on and on and on, and we're just going to feature uh, bands. You know, so, like, tomorrow I have the list of, like, I, coming up, I have COC, Caius, uh uh, a bunch of fucking bands uh, that are that I'm going to feature on that series, and that's going to be on YouTube, and uh, that's going to be fun. I think I'll kick out one or two a week. If he, did, I don't know if he's going to want to do more than one. So the first band better be a good one, Smith. Oh man, I want to talk about <clears throat> my new gig at Turtle Creek. Uh, at Bourbon 72. It's a, the premier steakhouse in northern Michigan. It really is. But what a fuck. It was kind of, you know, I don't want to. Hang on. Where's some wood? Knocking on wood. I'm not even superstitious, but I'll knock on wood all fucking day long. So maybe I am superstitious. Uh, real 180. Uh, I feel like I've done, <laughs> at least inside. Everybody, everybody at Turtle Creek has been all really supportive uh, of me. And, uh, you know, again, if you didn't hear me say this before or did, you know, I worked at Turtle Creek, but it was 20 years ago as a bartender, but it was the guns. Eh, 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 eh. This is craft cocktails, fine dining, and you're in charge of running food, too, uh, and getting food orders as well uh, with this job. And I was so out of, like, the uh, food, fine dining for sure, and craft cocktails. It's been a long time since I've really slung fucking drinks and relearning all that stuff. On the fly. Whew. It's been a fucking learning experience. Huge learning curve. And I've told a few people, and I was serious. I had real doubts uh, if this is really going to work out. But I've really, I'm like, okay, some of these drinks are becoming muscle memory now. I'm getting back into this fucking world. I'm figuring out a good system for me. And uh, uh, it's coming along. And, and I'm doing really well. Uh, uh I don't know if I'm doing really well. I'm <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a lot better. Uh, I'm not uh, making gigantic mistakes because my uh, the lead bartender there who trained me, uh, she went on vacation for like a week and a half. It felt like the rest of my life because, man, I was fucking – that first day she was gone was a Sunday. And I was by myself behind the bar. And they even limited by like half the amount of people that could sit there because oh fucking Nate's fucking sweaty ass is uh, 
uh, uh, work in the bar, and we don't think he can handle all this shit. Rightfully fucking so, man. I'd only been there like barely two weeks, and I was, to say I would struggle is an understatement. Remembering things and a lot of fuck ups. It's that first Sunday. <sighs> what a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I made so many mistakes, including one that I sat up at two o'clock in the morning on a straight up out of bed. Goo! What the fuck? I can't believe I did that too. Just remembered it. Just like that. <sighs> then I'm like, you know what? I need to go on a raging weed day workout run. And I just went on a monster two hour run, got super fucking high like the next day and just two hours of super hard elliptical run uh and just kind of worked out all right motherfucker you can do this these are the things you need to do and this is why i say these weed day workouts really just fucking uh 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 are so beneficial to me because they're just my like my source of therapy and just how i game plan and how i figure things out uh i was on that run and i'm just like okay and from that day forward once i it's like, okay, you set a plan and action to do the things to improve this job. What did you fuck up here? Why are you doing this kind of thing? Uh, evaluating yourself and really committing towards that. And ever since that fucking day and that weed day workout, man, I've been, I don't want to say mistake free because certainly not mistake free, but the ones that make you go, oh my God, like getting orders drastically wrong. Uh, man, I remember... I was talking, I was, uh, I had a table, I think it was four, four dudes, four top. And like, I, to say that my writing, uh, is organized, it would be a drastic understatement. There was time, and I, I would just be like, what the fuck am I writing here? These hieroglyphics, what? And like this four top, they all split their tab. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. And I really had to bite the bullet and go and through like, it seemed like forever. It seemed like these guys were waiting for fucking a million years for me to get their tabs. I had to go back and ask them specifically, what the fuck did you have and do the thing and split it off. And I was just having the worst time ever. And in my head, I'm like this, I'm not going to last at this fucking job. I'm going to get out of this fucking job. There's got to be something else I can do. <sighs> but ever since that weed day workout, man back to fucking square I'm getting back to neutral now we're getting <laughs> built back up our self-esteem is getting built back up which is huge because <laughs> for a while there a few weeks man it was like oh i am the worst what were you thinking that you could get this super difficult uh uh job in this super awesome environment with these super awesome people who are you to think you could do this i fucking did though <laughs> So anyway, things are going really well, and uh, uh, I love everybody at that place. I love the personalities in a restaurant, man. It's so awesome. Like, if you ever watch the show, or excuse me, the show, the movie, Waiting, which overall, I guess it's pretty funny, and I don't want to say none of these things specifically at all, ever, uh, that take place in this movie, the hijinks in the movie Waiting uh, do not at all happen at this particular restaurant that I work at. Uh, but it's just ref you, it, at many, many restaurants, many, many uh, 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 crazy things happen. And this movie does a great job. It, it's sort of like spinal tap for fucking servers and, and wait staff and bartenders. You know what I mean? It kind of is. Uh, so watch that movie. But there's just so many fucking personalities in a restaurant. It's pretty uh, – it's entertaining because every – somebody's always got uh uh something funny to say usually you know it's awesome anyway i'm glad that i'm there uh i do want to talk about a few things that i'm obsessing over first of all i saw the new top gun it's fucking rad uh the story was like all right i guess it was it worked but i saw an imax too and man which they had, it was IMAX in 2D, because I'm like, I thought IMAX, you had the glasses, and that's 3D anyway. 
I thought, that, well, what's the point of fucking having IMAX 2D? It's just a bigger screen, which is still rad. I'm not necessarily bitching, but I just always thought it was 3D. Anyway, uh, Top Fucking Gun, the new one. What an, it, a certain, like an achievement from uh, a technical standpoint is they put you in that fuck, those fucking planes, man. It's so stressful looking. <laughs> I don't even get freaked out by it. Uh, I think there's some people that get really freaked out by uh, those scenes and like, you know, just imagining yourself with those fucking G's, those G forces. And you're like, get all scared. I don't do that. I get scared of like things in the ocean, not in the sky. I like flying and things. I would be fucking awesome. Blue Angels were just in town, you know. I was like, man, how awesome would it be to go up with the Blue Angels and just rip it? But then I would probably be the guy to throw up because I didn't think I was fucking, I would get seasick ever. And then uh, this last summer, got seasick uh, out on Lake Michigan salmon fishing. And that was easily the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Probably not the worst thing that's ever happened to me, but it felt like that. It felt like it was never going to end. And it feels like I'll never probably go out on the water again. Because if that, if I, if that is even close of something that'll happen, I just have to take Dramamine, right? I actually thought when I was uh, plotting about the Ireland trip in 2026, I'm like, it would be actually really fun to just take a boat over there. <laughs> uh, shipping containers, that's not that's not what I want to do, but just like taking a boat over there, a boat passage would be fun. But after that fucking excursion on Lake Michigan, no fucking way. I'm not doing that. Anyway, uh... Top Gun was awesome. Where, 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 where did that come from? Where did that? I don't even know where that conversation went. But Top Gun was awesome. Also, uh, I ba we're basically in the '80s now with Stranger Things uh, again. Even with like fashion, like when I saw that Kate Bush, and I have to admit that I don't know a lot of Kate Bush. I have heard maybe a couple before, but it wasn't what I was listening to. It was not in my circle. It was not ar around me ever. And. Uh, but that Kate Bush song, I'm like, oh, it sounds like a modern song when I heard that Kate Bush song in, and when it blew up and became popular again, uh, with, and I am obsessing over that song. I listen to that fucking song all the time now <laughs> because I'm obsessing over that show, but it, it just, it, it feels modern. And they did that with the Metallica song, too. And Metallica's another fucking band that always will sound modern because they don't ever sound dated, specifically Master of Puppets in this case. There are some Metallica uh, uh, albums and songs that kind of sound dated to me at this point. That doesn't mean I don't love them. Uh, but fucking Master of Puppets, man. Whew. I'm going to talk Stranger Things now and just gush over this shit. Uh, there will be spoilers. Uh, and and uh, what a fucking achievement. How is that show gonna get any better than it is that it has been this last season, season four? Because when it went into this fucking season, I thought that this was the last season, and I was fucking geared up for it. And about halfway through, I remember just thinking, "This fucking show is so good." And then I was probably three or four episodes deep, and uh, uh, I'm like, "Oh." I had heard there's going to be a season five. And I'm like, well, this fucking show is already like the best and it's already gearing up for this war. I don't even know how you can top this because this is already probably to me, the greatest fucking piece of filmmaking I've probably ever seen the way that they, uh, uh, uh develop a story and develop characters over time. Uh, and to suck you in, you know, to, not to mention the nostalgia factor with the 80s, not to mention the uh, uh, the this fucking awesome soundtrack, specifically that Metallica scene. <laughs> that was, I've never seen a greater, as they fucking say in the scene, most metal ever. That was the most metal ever that I've seen uh the way that they weave in music and story and effects and when i say because i text brother levi 
or we were texting about that show and he's like did you watch the last two episodes of stranger things yet part two and i said i watched the the first of the two i have not watched the last episode yet and he said okay well make sure you're not around anybody it is two and a half hours of anxiety and make sure you're not around anybody and i'm like oh fuck i knew it and yeah it's a good thing i watched because I, I bet it was the first night or the second night that i was staying at my parents and i'm like in the bedroom next to him and uh uh, I don't want it to be loud. I want to watch this fucking show, and I'm not going to turn the TV on and be loud. So I'm going to watch it with my fucking phone, with headphones on and glasses. I'm sitting here just like... <laughs> fucking ugly crying, watching this goddamn show with glasses on. And I'm just like, this is affecting me so much, and I, it, there's nothing I can do about it. Because, as Levi said, it's still two and a half hours of anxiety as these emotions are hitting you from just different fucking angles, man. Gut punch and fucking there's a laugh. And you're like, oh, man. And I stayed up until three o'clock in the morning watching that final episode. Just drained. Drained from everything, from the whole, like, move with all the drama. Got in here finally. Got things kind of squared away. Watched that episode. And then slept for like 10 hours. <laughs> That's good therapy, you know? Where it drained you. What a fucking achievement, though, man. I don't know what's going to happen with this show. I don't know what they... How can they make this... I had heard that the Duffer brothers are going to... And somehow with the story... Because they're going to wait two years. Or this show is going to be out in two years. Which means they're going to start filming soon. Uh, I had heard the Duff Duffer brothers are going to address their age in like the next season. So it could be a time jump of like four years, five years. Who the fuck knows how they're going to do it. Uh, but like Hawkins is uh, getting ripped into the ground and the upside down is coming through. And uh, I've been I was I'm so devastated with the Max thing. That whole thing, I was just dreading. I knew I, ever since they hinted she would die, I was just like, and I thought for sure she was going to get killed. The first time in episode four, when uh, the running up that hill scene occurred, I didn't think I could get more invested in it other than that because I thought for sure she was going to die. And then, but then still just dreading it, and I knew it, and it was this, this terrible fucking gut feeling. And then it, when her bones started fucking snapping, I was just like, what the fuck? I couldn't believe I'm a 46-year-old man just sitting here with all these fucking emotions. <laughs> and, like, these fucking Duffer brothers are just yanking my strings. And it was uh, uh, an achievement in filmmaking. Just the way that they did that, did that from everything. They just have a way of, like... Pulling the story off the way that they, you know, when all of the uh, 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 characters get together, when they're coming up with a certain plan, OK, we're going to do this and this will lead to this and this will lead to this and this will lead to this. They uh, do a fucking fantastic job at like laying that out for everybody that's watching. So then and really doubling down on those details okay again we're going over it again you're doing this you're doing this you're doing this so you become just as fucking involved as they are. They're fucking masters, man. I don't even know what those what uh, the Duffer brothers have done other than Stranger Things, but I do know they're doing the fucking talisman. And I can tell you right now, that is uh, the biggest fucking Stephen King boner I can probably imagine for myself. I bet you the fucking talisman is my favorite Stephen King book. I've read that book probably four times. It 100% is, including the sequel, The Black House. I've been waiting for this fucking movie my whole life, and I don't even know if it's going to be a series or a movie, but the Duffer Brothers are doing that. And what a fucking perfect matchup. There was, of course, that scene in Stranger Things when uh, that gutted my fucking soul when uh, Lucas is reading Max to Max while she's in a coma uh, from the fucking talisman. And I'm just like, oh, my God. 
It's the best show of all fucking time. Probably the best fucking show of all time. It takes over MASH. Man. Stranger Things. Fucking A. Um, oh, and Love, Death, and Robots. I wanted to talk about Love, Death, and Robots also on Stranger Things. I think this is my stoner thing. I'm pretty sure that this is my stoner thing. Where... <laughs> Uh, get home after a long night. I had a long, especially those first. Man, Love, Death, and Robots was like a fucking lifesaver for me. Um, those first, that first month at the casino. You know, we're getting ready to move, packing things up. Everything's super stressful, and I would just get home, and I would be like, <sighs> just broken from running all night, sweating all night. <sighs> Go jump in the shower, wash your hair, wash all the sweat off your fucking body, and just sit down. Go out to the garage, smoke a fucking bowl, get super ripped, and go watch Love, Death, and Robots. And Love, Death, and Robots is one of the most fun goddamn things I've watched in a long time. And I typically don't do animated things. And I'm trying to find more from that animated world uh, to go explore because some of it's kind of fun. And I feel like most of it is just my closed-minded fucking bullshit. I don't want that. I don't like that. I don't like cartoons. Blah, 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 that I'm trying to get myself out of. But Love, Death, and Robots is just like a s animated, not always, but sometimes in different kinds of animation, computer, drawn, whatever, CGI, uh, sci-fi, horror, fucking series. It's like the Twilight Zone uh, uh, mixed with some Cthulhu shit here and there. There's some fucking weird ass shit, man. And it is so brutal and cool and awesome. So if uh, you're looking for something to watch, Love, Death, and Robots, that's honestly just to just sit there and get super high and watch Love, Death, and Robots. That's like my new thing. Just to sit here and vibe out. What the fuck is happening <laughs> <laughs> on this goddamn show. I mean, these rats are leading an attack with these super sophisticated laser uh, guided weapons. Mind you, rats. Uh, that's just one episode. With this super rad Scottish guy in a kilt. You know? It's just a thing. Anyway, I wanted to tell you about Love, Death, and Robots, and that's my uh, new stoner thing. Uh, also, Tuesday nights, uh, still doing trivia nights at Fresh Coast Beer Works in Traverse City. We're doing it out on the patio tent uh, through the summer, and that's been super fun. And people are coming, and people are having a great time uh, and really getting to know uh, about trivia night at uh, Fresh Coast at 120 Park Street in downtown Traverse City. And, I, and now that I have the time, kind of, I'm kind of pimping this trivia out, coming up with super fun categories, super fun music uh, uh, rounds. And, yeah, that that trivia usually is three to four general trivia rounds, then one to two uh, music rounds, uh, different kind of things like to throw in. So uh, that is Tuesday night. Starts at 7 o'clock at uh, Fresh Coast Beer Works in Traverse City. And uh, what else? Oh, Patreon. More stuff coming to Patreon. I'll be getting some al album reaction and reviews up. And uh, what else? What else? What else? More what the hell everything's. And, of course, summer school. <laughs> summer school in Fort Smith. Hey, I think that's going to do it for me. Uh, what else should I tell you? What else should I tell you? Nothing. Shut the fuck up, Smitty. What the hell? Everything!